Hey, welcome to the Think Loud Crew podcast. Today, we are two moms getting real with parenthood, relationships, and the WTF moments of our daily lives. We've got some lovely guests on here today. We've got hey. Miss Danielle. Hey, hey. Right here, we've got Miss Allison. <laughs> Hello. They are besties, y'all. And, um... Let's see. Let's see how this episode goes today. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> me too. Excited. Me too. How long have you guys been best friends? Oh man. I mean, we've known each other since ninth grade. Um, Are we? What is that? Like, how many? <laughs> how many, how many years? Don't know your ages? <laughs> no, yeah. but it's just like. <laughs> I mean, I just we've realized out of high friends. school. What is this? This is not 15 years. Ooh, honey, hold I on. I want to say. I just got a great hair. I just want to say. <laughs> Why yeah. she say that? It was great. But I mean, so add. like we got close as we got older. Because okay. like I said, we're like total opposites. Like Danielle's a little more quiet. I'm more out there. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't so close in the friends group, the girls group back then. But I did play on the team. Yeah. So guilty by association. When you say team. But so we all play softball. But then we had the other side where we played travel ball where we played. And got we it. Traveled yeah. And the local parks, you know, near our home. Oh, our would you guys consider yourselves girls, girls? Like, do you like, like hanging that? out with Yeah, I'm girls? like, what is that? I was like, <laughs> yeah, like, like, if you're a girls girl, like you, like you gravitate to hanging out with women. I, you know, I've oh. never had See, a quick history with a bunch of yes, women. Yes, but because I grew up around guys like I don't have any sisters so I'm Mm -hmm. a little bit different it depends on what type Mm -hmm. of female you are I don't do like the catty gossip Uh I'm more of like I literally she'll tell you I tell all of my friends I love you Mm -hmm. I'm so serious yeah like she has a brother I have a sister but does it take you to have longevity in your friendship to tell them that you love no them? you'll just I treat every if I meet you one time and I feel something it's the same like we I'm, both have had loss at a younger age or then you know experience what it feels like to lose people mm-hmm. early mm-hmm. so you know when you have that regret um regretful mindset or memory that you didn't say what you wanted to say it's almost like you know what don't take anybody for granted mm. and we so, grew up with unconditional love, I love that. it's yeah. a little bit different we you yeah. love people differently for who they are not what you are expecting them mm-hmm. to be you love your friends in every stage that's why we've been friends for so long you and know? Not, love not through seasons. yeah here's I mean, that on, not everyone gets that i love you from their family or their friends so i mm-hmm. think you know when you connect with someone and there is good energy I like that, you yeah. know, because I learned that with you guys, too, you know, how you were raised every time I come around and I see you, there's pure love. It's almost mm-hmm. like um, exuding love. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just, oh, hey, you're my cousin. I, I miss mm-hmm. you here. But yeah, yeah you feel it. it. It goes beyond like the sur- the surface level. Yes. Right. I think that as I get older, I think I've learned that I don't necessarily need to be around someone or my friends every day. Yes. I don't need to talk to you every day. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends lives in SAC, and I barely talk to her. But the second that <laughs> we're together, it's like you would think that we've been talking right. every damn day. And I don't need mm-hmm. to catch you up on anything. You don't need to catch me up on anything because for some yep. reason we already know. Mm-hmm. Like it's She moved uh-huh. to where? Indiana. <laughs> Evansville. <laughs> It, it, How did we get there? the first time I went to go visit her. <laughs> oh, so you... Ha- okay, I'm so Girl. happy that you went to Evansville. Yeah. I'm, Girl, like, I'm on I the second one. Evansville. Okay, so uh-huh. born we and raised in LA. There. Yes. <laughs> Both of you guys. Yes, yes, for sure. And you recently moved to Indiana? I did. I did. A couple of years ago, um, you know, I learned that my grandmother, my, my dad's mom and sister... Um, moved to this small town in Indiana. I didn't know the city at that time. And whenever I would catch up with them, um, she would tell me more about the city and uh, more about themselves. I was really Mm -hmm. close with my mom's side of the family, Mm -hmm. almost completely distant with my dad's side. So after losing my mother, my grandmother, Mm -hmm. having a a lot of loss on Mm -hmm. our side of the family, I really wanted to take an opportunity to go help because my grandmother... Um, is helping my aunt care for their two daughters. She's a single mother. Um, She got promoted, moved across the country, and started work. And at the time that I was dealing with um, a personal issue and a family issue, I decided that I needed to go help my grandmother, especially because this um, involuntary opportunity came up. And that was in Indy? Yes. So how do you like Indiana life? I didn't know that part. Oh, man. So, mm. so when I visited, um, I had a two-week trip, 
and I just wanted to go see my grandmother, see where they live, find out what this cute little town looked like. Yeah, girl, I got, I landed right. You, you, you know, you're, we're in the air, leaving L.A. Big city lights everywhere, little people. You, you know, look like a bunch of ants. Yeah, you get to the Midwest, and all you see are the square patches. You know, of, of corn field, fields. corn <laughs> lines. You know, agriculture, big buildings, manufacturing facilities. There's coal mines mm. there. So I'm landing, and the airport is as big as this room. So you can walk. <laughs> from end to end it's just like, it's it's giving, sounds like a movie it's, it's giving it's, small it's, town vibes oh yeah. my god like so small right <laughs> so um how soon is like cause I'm like girl I called her the first time I went and we had breakfast I said why is this man what did he have on when the people go uh, gator hunting <laughs> you, you move past that man had that gator, gator hunting suit on at the at the breakfast table okay Doug Dynasty with boots on so yeah all, everybody I'm looks curious. like Doug Dynasty I was like, like, everybody looks like Doug Dynasty no I'm at the done. restaurant for breakfast <laughs> I'm done this is what you wrote out the bed and- is it a diverse town mm. <laughs> no see she's like no ma'am so, so it's so, giving white it's give- very white okay powder and you know what? <laughs> Everyone asks, like, Duck <laughs> Dynasty, why Indiana, what do, you, what do you feel like it's there? Farms. It's just culture shock, right? Well, no, yes, seriously. but it was also okay because, you know, I was looking for um, a way to challenge what I've learned, what I've known living mm-hmm. in Los Angeles all mm-hmm. my life in a big city where family is just a call away, mm-hmm. a drive away. You can get everything you need, you know, within eight hours. But getting there, such a small t- town. Our, like, Crenshaw, La Cienega, um, La Brea, mm-hmm. that's almost like the entire town <laughs> um, of Indiana, but in a three-mile stretch. So you, this started off on a two-week trip, but now you've mm-hmm. been there for two years? It turned and turned into, yeah, a long-term visit, for sure. Are you back now in L.A.? I'd like to go I, I, I am. It's so nice. no more Indiana? No, I've got to go back, you know, say my goodbyes, uh-huh. get my things, and take care of a few things. But I may have a connection to Indiana long term. Okay. Um, because while I was there also, I got deeply connected with an agency or an organization that I've been connected to here, and that's the Small Business Development Center. Okay. Mm-hmm. So can you talk about what that is? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, while going visiting grandma and uh, auntie I needed something else to do mm-hmm. I am so used to spending you know 12 hours to 16 hours or more of my days um, actively working um, helping people feeding people mm-hmm. so with this time that I had and helping my grandmother I really wanted to get connected to the community and learn where I was I didn't want to just be there and be talking about trailers you know coming up and down the, the <laughs> trailers <done>. tractors <laughs> Up the main highways, you know, what is going on here? And I thought I would get close mm-hmm. to agriculture, farm to table environment. That's, yeah. that's okay. our goal. We're looking for our farm farmland Home house. Steading, also yeah. making sure Ownership we can get out of out high ass mm-hmm. LA and then at some point, you know, our family can have some acreage yeah. and yeah. we're gonna have a living, grow some food. A living mm-hmm. grocery store. You know, have mm-hmm. everything we need, you know, on our land and you know, take care of each other's kids. You know, that's something else to talk about. Because who's having? Because okay. we that's don't. Another subject. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but a lot of people we know have. <sighs> we right got, now, I'm getting another dog. But we got honest. kids. We don't, yeah. us. We don't got make eye contact with you. Don't kids. Listen, both, we both don't have kids. So why do <laughs> no. you say when we take care of each other's kids? When we eventually dogs. you have them, she means if you dogs. want them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, I don't know if the kids Ask are them to, You're going to watch my dogs. I'll watch your future kids. Mm-hmm. We have to find a man first, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, interesting. You see all this land, you see all this space. Um, I come from an environment and an industry where I want to know where my food comes from. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll talk about that in a, a yeah. little bit. Um, so I was I started networking. I needed to know what was going on in this town. Mm-hmm. Um, when I landed, after I got introduced, my aunt introduced me to three whole people and <laughs> got their numbers, and they were all women. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got one side of the picture. We're... You know, are the men, what is going on in business? Mm-hmm. Who are the movers and shakers? How does this community work? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Why? Okay, I know the answer. Because okay. we come from entrepreneurial houses. But <laughs> I'm just like, what led you to, like, even wanting to research or get into that side of business or, like, have that curiosity? Yeah, yeah. So um, researching and getting into business, um, 
I think it was natural because from a young age, I'm exposed to entrepreneurs, women in business, professionals, um, those who are climbing their way to the top from a um, very small grassroots position. Mm -hmm. Um, So wanting to get into business was really a um, the interest in building legacy, Mm. understanding financial literacy and wealth. My parents, um, I feel like, started many uh, businesses or concepts and ideas, and they didn't necessarily last or survive or get passed down. There wasn't a benefit to that. So as I went through college, graduated, lived here in L.A., and I'm seeing, you know, all these options, um, I really knew that uh, working for someone was not the option for me as far as where I wanted to go after thinking about climbing a corporate ladder. Mm-hmm. Being a young black woman in a particular industry, you're uh, not given the opportunities you need when you need them because you're stereotyped, you're judged. Mm-hmm. You know, people want to know why are you qualified to be in this space when no one like you has been. The mm-hmm. way that you speak, the way that you communicate, your culture, you know, why would you belong? So did you ever try to go corporate? Um, I did. And I I feel like I want to back up a little bit because um, we're talking about entrepreneurship and then my path to Indiana and then being here in L.A. Right. Um, I went to school for architecture and interior design. My father was in construction. He took over my grandfather's um, business at one point, and that business is not open. It's not running today. Um, but I really love being hands on. Mm-hmm. And then my mother was a cosmetologist. So her shop was right mm-hmm. next door to our home, it was attached. So from a young age, whenever we're going to school, leaving, Um, coming back home, I'm helping my mother in her salon. Mm -hmm. And I'm also helping my dad early hours in the morning on the weekend, um, tearing down wood and building things. I love that juxtaposition. (laughs) The softness of hair and the the hardness of like construction. Yes. Yes. You grew up watching both of them basically creating their own schedules, creating their own businesses and not necessarily working for, you know, a corporation or somebody else. They worked for themselves. You grew up watching that mentality i did i also As service providers too yeah i watched them develop themselves professionally i watched them um, extend their education i did see them take jobs when they needed to take care of us and family and you know from a young age you think everything's fine you know the world is good especially mm-hmm. if you're well taken care of mm-hmm. um, but to actually look back and see what they did it was whatever they needed to do to keep money coming in and flowing yeah. and taking care of business, whether that was together or separate. Mm-hmm. So it was divide and conquer or come together and make sure there was a business to work while supporting our other family. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I did go to um, finished high school, went to college two weeks after graduating in an accelerated program for interior design and architecture. Cool. I felt like that gave me... Um, the opportunity to to understand project management, attention to detail, um, how to plan, how to present, make things look beautiful. We're talking about home decor. We're talking about um, building and drawing plans using AutoCAD and drafting and being accurate within an eighth, um, you know, an eighth or, or, or meters or centimeters. And we're old. Let's not go back yeah, to. Yeah, you was good in math. You did good in geometry. I was to say what? <laughs> yeah, she did good in geometry. So, okay. I felt like a designer. I felt Girl. like someone who could be an engineer and an architect. And so. that's when I think architect and design. It's not just like one facet of a business or a project. It's mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. full project. It's from like the thought to okay let me write some notes to let me develop this to let me actually correct because you're taking someone's dream their vision what they want their spaces to look like and then you're having to put it on a plan for other people to follow Mm -hmm. so we're talking about systems operations management structure communication being detailed on time all of those things i didn't know this part of you and i'm so happy (laughs) i'm finding out because Mm -hmm. Knowing the entrepreneurial side of you, it now makes so much more sense where I'm like, okay, I understand why you've had the longevity that you've had Uh because you've learned how to actually take the time to plan and understand businesses require systems. Yes. If you don't have systems in place, it's not going to flow. It's not going to operate. When things come up, it's like, yeah, what do you do? You you don't know how to pivot. You don't have a game plan. I Mm -hmm. did you have a game plan coming out of college? 
Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I um, I had the <laughs> great opportunity to watch our family and friends fuck up, do things that they're not supposed to do. <laughs> not me, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've but learned. we have. We All have, right, I'm like that's definitely my whether pride. whether it's a, a a good life, crazy life, anything happen. Um, you know, people are successful or not. We've we've had a wide variety of yeah. people to follow, watch, and learn from. And my goal was to follow the path of wisdom not get into each, any trouble. I didn't want to cause problems for my family. I did not mm. want to be the source of anger, animosity, mm. um, drama, resentment, regret. I just wanted to be um, the light in the world, let's mm-hmm. just say, especially for my family. So you weren't going to get any problems from me. And I think as I've um, carried that through my adulthood, the only thing that I see is how do you find individuality in trying to be good or yeah. doing good? Because sometimes then, you have to speak up and it might not be met with the same mm-hmm. um, energy. energy mm-hmm. And you might become the problem and they might not expect it from you because you you come off very... Yeah. Nice and soft spoken. Yeah, that's why you nice. have a not so nice. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> have the you, yeah, yeah. The backbone. I'm for nice, sure. but I don't play. Track, that's right? one thing. About, I don't play with my friends. Yeah, and if I tell you I love you, I don't. Mm-mm. I think I'm that would be hard for me in a friendship if you're watching your friend who is so genuinely like mm-hmm. this and you you see them kind of getting used or walked yep. over or mm-hmm. abused mm-hmm. or mentally th- like you're and you want to fight for them but it's also like how do you balance your friendship in a way where you're not overstepping mm-hmm. a boundary and also not fighting her problems yeah we we literally can talk about anything i will tell her like danielle you lucky i love you because i'll cuss her out right now yeah <laughs> no for real i'm, and really we each other I'm very you know we tell each other the truth and i'll literally walk away Mm-hmm. Like, I'm 36 now. So if we was back in my 20s, we would have a different conversation. Yeah. But, like, right now, mm-hmm. I walk away. Yeah. But I will tell her, like, Danielle, I don't I don't like the way whoever is speaking to you. Mm-hmm. I don't like what's going on. So you give her mm-hmm. the truth of that. I mean, I mean yeah. why am I going to sit here and lie to her? Yeah. What about <laughs> when it comes to, to relationships? Did you speak on Ooh. her marriage? Um, There's... I don't even know how to explain this. Um, we do give each other advice, but I always told her, only you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she'll, she'll make sure you know. I'm accountable for what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. Yeah. And we're talking about relationship and marriage. She's known, um, you know, everything about me since high school. Right. So she's been able to follow, yeah. you know, who I'm with, um, where I am. She was the first person out the friend group, I mean, to get engaged, married. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when I'm at the point... Where I'm engaged, you you should talk to somebody that's yeah. When all right. your friends are single there. or dating, yeah. what am I getting you know, myself you, into? You're yeah. usually you know? the person. Yeah. So backstory to catch you guys up. It's always hard to have these conversations on podcasts <laughs> because we we actually know each other in yes. real life. So like yes. we know Kyle and I know everything, yeah. but we need to get everyone else. Don't. Up to They're yeah. like, wait, she was married. Like I know yeah. someone's listening. Like, can we go to that? So how old were you when you got married? Since you were the first out of the friend group. Yeah. Um, Ooh, it's hard when things get blocked out of your. But wasn't it 2000, 2000, So 2016. 16, yeah. So all right. So we're going to so 30. Four, yeah, I was 30. No, no 29 turning 30. That's no. right. See, uh, uh-uh, hold on. I, but even that, <laughs> I'm saying like, yeah, 29, like, 30. I, to me, I'm like, oh wow, because I know so many friend groups now where it's like. The first one to get married or engaged, the numbers are so much younger. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. So I was engaged for five, um, six, seven. But I mean, they were high school seven sweethearts. Seven years, six so years. I mean, okay. We sat and at the same prom table. So. Married five years, and I met him um, in two thousand and three. So two years prior to graduating high school. Wow. No, no, we were definitely okay. in the twenties though. Yeah, so, and how long have you guys been divorced? Um, Shine's now like they're like wait the divorce I'm, like, I'm, I'm just, just trying to get trying to get her there nine days that's why I was nine like we're talking days, days. <laughs> okay are you okay I'm okay congratulations I'm like, it, it's it's not it's, it's not something that I'm proud to speak of okay it's not something that makes me happy right it is something that was necessary and that's even worse for me so mm-hmm. I've 
this the entire time that I've had to go through this, I delayed. I I've delayed mm. my divorce. Mm. I waited through my divorce. I prayed through my divorce. When you first, when you say you waited, was that in a spirit of not of not wanting to face it, or a sense of like we can we can make it work, like we can go to therapy, like trying to reconcile. What is that word? Reconcile. Reconcile. reconcile it. Like what was the waiting period for you? So, oof. The waiting period was all of a couple of, of months. How do I talk about this? I've been working on the issues personally and then, you know, as a couple mm -hmm. for many years prior to me making the decision to file for a separation and then ultimately divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this has been like a four-year process for me if we want to tell the truth. But when mm -hmm. I, once I decided it was time, it was only because at that point my livelihood and uh, my lifestyle, my health, mm -hmm. uh, my family, everything was becoming um, – um, help me out. It was affected Danielle by was the relationship. Yeah. The stress wow. was literally taking a toll on her body. It was yeah. very Like, heavy. literally – her skin, she had to start going to that hospital. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to say too much because this person wasn't there for her while she's going through this. Mm. You know? So you have to stop and think. And to introduce something else, Danielle is very into God, mm -hmm. the Lord. So another thing was is the spiritual side of it. Mm -hmm. About how we speak about divorce mm -hmm. with the church. Right. So, and I had to reiterate, like, this person has already done. <laughs> yeah, but not even X, that. Y, and Z. I want to. I'll body. cut like, that. But you know, we're thinking about a whole generation. You know, in the timeline that we've we've built this relationship and we've been together, and what has come with that, mm -hmm. um, and come about after. Um, there is a whole community of people who followed us through high school, through the city we live in, mm -hmm. through the relationships that we've built, who are rooting for. A young, black love. happy, you know, mm -hmm. couple that is really doing something that's worth following or planting mm -hmm. a seed so that there is an example. So when you're talking about the community following, you know, your story, yeah. per se, that's the backstory of that is that you guys were high school sweethearts, high school sweethearts. You yeah. had a long engagement. You and then you turned that into almost a business, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. guys were family business partners. Mm -hmm. um, your family welcomed him into your family business mm -hmm. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's when you say, like, the community followed our story. Yes. And, and, and rooted for you. Mm-hmm. And this is not just social media. This is real, real life. life. Like, no, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. just our friends. We're talking yeah. about this people is, that are from yeah. the city, mayor, official. Like, yeah. You know? So can you speak on having a business with a partner, a partnership? Sure. And now, now that you guys are separated, what that looks like or, like, maybe mistakes that you made in the past where you feel mm -hmm. like, I never saw the D word ever presenting itself. Yeah. But... My business mindset Ooh, should have right. thought worst case yes. ever scenario. Yeah, this what, is how you This is yourself. what I could have done. Yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. talk about that? Sure. Um, you know, starting a business, anyone can get online, Google how to start a business. They're going to automatically tell you go register, file, you know, create your EIN, open a bank account. They're skipping every other step that should come before that. And the world does not help us out, you know, now that everyone has an opinion or can give information as an expert. With so, no qualifications you know, right. or experience. Just the right, right. So we're talking, you know, we, we all graduated 2000s, you know, college right after that. We're, we're, you know, going into the world in our 20s. Social media wasn't as big as it was when mm -hmm. we we're starting. So, you know, we had some of the old school methods of um, starting a business, like really leaving the library system and then getting <laughs> online to start using, you know, Google or AI services and then going to organizations and your community, newspaper, radio, wherever you can find help. Mm -hmm. um, I naturally understood the process because of just being around business owners at a young age. So what I did um, or what I thought about after interior design and decorating, 
I was laid off 2008, something called a recession back then. We didn't pay no attention to that. Didn't know what that Damn, means. 20, that. 20, 23, 24. I, 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 I didn't forget okay. the recession because our family business thrived. Oh, that's the good. So, that's a blessing. And, uh, it, it didn't affect I, us. I think as, after yeah, COVID, I forgot anything else. But yeah, right. okay. COVID, COVID, you know, COVID changed life for everybody. Okay, so you got laid off during the recession. Yeah, we're, we're laid off. You know, I'm working part-time. I'm trying to figure out what else to do with my life. And I was going to go back to business college. I stopped going to um, school for engineering and design um, because I was in a relationship. You're young. I don't have time for all that. Mm-hmm. I also want to make money. And how am I going to pay for grad school once I get there? All these things swimming in my mm-hmm. mind. Um, so that was around 2008. Um, I was art, I was still working part time, uh, but then it was time to start a business. My dad was talking about okay, investing in real estate, um, going into business college, and then potentially starting some type of business. And that only came about because uh, my mother had an accident, got some money from a um, settlement, mm-hmm. and dad, mom, and dad wanted to invest that money. Mm-hmm. So real estate was first. Why the did we not buy some property? Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't want his daughter um, in you know new relationship um, uh, for us to as a couple to move on the east side or where we can afford a property at that time. Okay. So then that conversation was out. I don't know why it didn't continue. Then I knew that my dad was speaking to a couple of people who had business locations. There was no idea of what type of business at that time. Mm -hmm. He was just getting his feelers out for um, restaurant property, Mm -hmm. um, a retail office location. My Mm -hmm. mother's uh, reopening and starting her salon in another location. So there were so many things on the table that they would come back to me and ask, you know, could you help here? Is this mm. interesting? They were almost to you? trying to create a create something, around create something, yeah. something that something. could help you guys, yeah, thrive and survive and Correct. make Launch. money, yeah, yeah. and yeah. keep you whole, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because okay. boyfriend at the time, then um, he was working. He had um, done some college as well um, in El Camino, and then <clears throat> decided to go to work as well. Um, because he had to live um, not with his parents, but with grandparents and in a situation he wasn't comfortable with. Yeah. Um, So I was helping him find a job and then also making sure that he had everything he needed and also teaching him what we knew in entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. you know, just bringing him into the family and finding out what is he interested in or what can we do together. Yeah. But um, he was growing in the uh, mobile technology space where he worked for uh, Sprint Mm T-Mobile or AT&T and um, serviced mobile phones. So he's really good at that Um, technology, anything um, device related electronic related um so that was helpful in setting up you know computers um phones applications software that sort of thing so i helped him get his first job i helped him get a cell phone i've helped with a couple of other things especially with his family um so you guys kind of build together. We built together. And you brought each other we up. We built together. Young. So while parents were looking to invest, I also had a good amount of savings because I listened and, you know, set myself up the way I needed to. She's smart. so smart. I didn't listen. Definitely <laughs> wasn't doing that. I, I was outside yeah, in the street. But then, yeah, I, oh. was you. <laughs> I was outside in the street. Okay. Wow. No, I, I was on a anything. good path <laughs> there because um, I think, like, right out of high school <laughs> at 18, I think I was the only one who had close to, like, what eight thousand dollars in savings? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to I do was something in space with right that. Out. I didn't have shit. I don't even think I got a bank this account. This is why, and you ask, you're like, how long you guys been best friends? <laughs> we didn't start getting close when we was older. I'm like, Dang we yeah, just what? had a conversation what last year about our childhood. Yeah, for we're the first, like, for yo. the first time, like before like, high school. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned Jesus. so much. No, but it's funny when you have those yeah. conversations with your friends. Though. Yeah, no, it yeah. is. Yeah, definitely. So at what point did That's your great. parents get? <laughs> The business. Okay, so um, um, salon happened. That was going. Um, Dad was working for his county of Los Angeles. Um, um, Fiance was doing okay with the cell phone business, waiting for a promotion. It didn't quite happen. So it was like, all right, what what to do? So there was this cute little restaurant around the corner from my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. Um, She lives in Gardena. And um, that's five minutes from my home. Um, 
hubby graduated from Gardena High School. I graduated from Westchester High School. So it was in the neighborhood, in the community in which we live and grow. My dad went to this small location, and it was interesting for me because it was a walk, five-minute walk from my grandmother's house, Mm -hmm. and we knew the neighborhood. And um, I actually hated the idea and hated the space and really wanted my dad to go away because he's like, oh, how about opening a restaurant? Rent was good. Um, <laughs> the lease was would have been easy to sign. We had the down payment ready. Yeah. And I'm literally getting ready to take the GMAT exam to go to Cal State Long Beach and finish my um, business, mm-hmm. uh, my master's. I said, you know what, restaurant is the worst decision to make. It's the hardest, you know, business to get into. It's risky. Shut the door on my dad's face, told him to go away. Please, I don't want to talk about it. All right, (laughs) leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. But it was eating at me. Um, I had had just been laid off a month prior. Um, Things are not going the way I want them to go. I'm eager. I just want to keep moving. Had you had any restaurant, like, food experience? Oh, let's not forget to talk about that. No, didn't I just say we talked about design, architecture, yeah, so like, cosmetology, she just knows how to cook, you know. I was going to say, do you like to eat? Food. So food. So as I'm growing yeah, and, you know, cookies. mom, dad, we people are busy. Hungry. Right. So you, <laughs> had, you did secretly Don't let like food. Fool you. I was <laughs> tired of eating the same shit over and over. You know, our parents have a rotating dinner to make oh, it yeah. easy oh for us. Wait, like, really? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's funny. I know. I have, when I think about I my childhood. That. Sorry. No, but I didn't. That's yeah. funny though. I mean, like, there we was had a like a baked chicken. Every there was Thursday. spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. It was like uh, tacos. Yes. Like yes. I was feel it like at there least was different like, seasoning. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was consistent. It was pretty consistent. But yeah. it was also like we yeah. would go to friends' house. Like they, they're it was so good. Fresh. It wasn't bad, but I do remember we like like a staple six meals right. that like we knew. Yeah, I don't know. Was there some type of thing that went around? I like, do we even have that today? Like, you know, the mom plan for I need a mom plan. Have a rotation at the house. Uh, we have a rotation at our house. I think it was because our families were working so much. Mm-hmm. Like that was just. I just don't know how they made dinner plan. work like that. Yeah, and they they would last more than one day. So yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Yeah. they work together. Mm-hmm. Both my parents used to. I cook, just got tired so. of the yeah. same stuff. So I would start going to the store, and I told my mom, I said, "Look, I'm gonna take care of groceries mm-hmm. for the house." So once I want started to um, give back and take care of utilities and help out at the home. Wow, I was never like that. She just said that, she had eight thousand dollars saved. So my mom was when we were eighteen, also, getting paid three hundred dollars like, a week. Where like, how are you saving? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I will never. I'm like, I was making six twenty five. How was you? Oh, okay. Girl, I was helping people with their businesses on the side. Yeah, you had to be doing a lot. Yeah, yeah. We, call. we had a what lot of family. You was doing a lot because at I'm 18? like, I was at Albertsons. <laughs> I was at Albertsons. <laughs> I was asking my dad for lunch <laughs> money. <laughs> so, like, can I get some money? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Mm-mm, so you guys great. ended up doing a restaurant. You guys started the restaurant. <laughs> yep, yep. Decided How did we it was a restaurant. Come back around to the idea of the restaurant. How did we come back around? Um, went to take my uh, GMAT entrance exam and totally bombed it. It was <laughs> just. <laughs> really, Danny? I fucked up. We can have more conversations. <laughs> I didn't even know I'm that. I'm smart, right? No, you really are. Me, like, I, I did good. Finished college but three years. But you bombed years. that test. Bom- fucked it You know up. what? Like, there was a reason. God, yeah, there was a reason you bombed that God, test. Yeah. Yeah. Did bombing that test make you guys get the restaurant? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So two you weeks later, supposed to do I that. went, I knocked on That's my dad. Wild. I said, Dad. <laughs> can we talk about the restaurant? <laughs> like, can we talk about because I'm like I gotta do something. I gotta be great at something. Yeah. So the food, you know, the food purchasing. So whenever I would eat at home, I would just go to the store and I would buy something new that I had never tried. Whether it was it. a piece of produce, That's fruit, me. a box, some other type of meal to oh. incorporate into my diet. Yeah. And then if we didn't like it, I would hide it in protein or in a casserole or in a baked yeah. dish so that yeah. way we can get the nutrition from it and move the fuck going. Because I bought all this stuff. Right, we're going to eat gonna it. Waste it. We're going to eat it. Mm-hmm. Okay, because my dad was, did not play. Every little inch. Now I know how you. That's why you be making sauces because you had to hide that stuff. Listen, I wish I could ah. tell you. I wish she made. Listen, the, sauces. What we dressings. ate last night. Yeah, <laughs> she was like, I don't know what I made, but I'm like, salad. It was we still good. Like, we need to I don't add ever <laughs> with her. I don't yeah. ever have to yeah. worry about if I the food's gonna be good. I have a problem with simple good. meals or simple recipes or simple items. I have to elevate it. I take what someone else does, make it better. That um, when you went to your dad to tell Man, him, like, like, let's do the let's restaurant. Let's do the restaurant. Okay, you guys clearly got the restaurant. Yes. At what point did you introduce your fiance into the restaurant? 
Um, it was it was much later. So oh, right. my mother and I went and visited the landlord. We signed the lease together. Mm-hmm. My dad was um, involved with the investment or the money. And once we got that lease signed, um, yeah, he wasn't um, fiancé, um, boyfriend. He was working for the phone company, and that okay. was in Santa Monica. So he was doing really well, um, I think, on... Was he on Wolf or Beverly? Somewhere. Santa Monica Boulevard. Mm-hmm. Um, One quick type. <laughs> I've noticed there are certain people in our family, when they tell stories in locations, they have to give the streets. <laughs> yes. yes. I don't yes. know why. Because I'm trying to remember, too. Yeah, okay. Nana does the same thing. She, she'll want to give you exact date uh-huh. in the street. And I you're need like, you to visualize I, what's happening here. Yeah, okay? I'm literally picturing, He's like, doing our you know, ride, and young Beverly man. at this point. He's fixing, okay. you know, prominent people's phones. He's making okay <laughs> money there. Okay, He's got his own apartment. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still at home. Um, and you know, I would visit or stay with him a couple of nights out of the week. So that was how the relationship was. But I was still at home with mom and dad. Um, so we, we, we signed the lease. Me and mom signed the lease. Um, we get the keys. Everybody's excited. We, you know, we're celebrating. So in preparation, mm-hmm. um, this is 2011. Um, I'm engaged because uh, we've talked about 08. Engaged June January 2011, Mm -hmm. June 2011, we're having the discussion about property real estate. Mm -hmm. By July 2011, failed to test, talked to dad. He's talking about the lease. August 1st, we were deciding on a grand opening date. Mm. Oh, wow. So this happened happened quick. Okay, so before the lease, in terms of starting a business, did you guys, like, (laughs) was there a business plan in place, or was it just like, we're just going to open this restaurant and... The plan was, we got settlement money, it's burning our pockets, we need to start something, double this up. Now. Mm. Okay? She didn't even know what they was going to be doing. We don't even know. Restaurant? We're going to double this up with food. I love this story. Looking back, people got to eat... Do you wish Always. that you guys would have maybe held on to your money and built a business plan oh. behind it and Heck. not just jumped into mm-hmm. a, a space and said, now we got a restaurant? Heck yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I thought about it all the time. Even as businesses operating, running, and then got better, I was like, I still wish I would have done more research mm-hmm. because I learned as I go. We, I was at the School of Art Knox, okay, trying to start mm-hmm. this thing. So it was like a three-month time period where money's burning pockets. What are we doing? Find the location. Put the deposit down. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about when are we going to open because he wants his rent in two months. We only got two months free, oh and this God. place is a fucking mess. Oh. Okay, so the neighbor, the neighbors. Uh, so we get the place. I start immediately going up and down the street talking to people about what's going on here um, in the neighborhood. So this is off of um, El Segundo and Van Ness Avenue. Yeah, we'll we'll figure Screets. that out. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> <I'm not at> <laughs> <screets. Yeah>. Um. <laughs> It's a small location. People would call it a hole in the wall. And um, there were several restaurants who had been in that spot prior, failed, Mm -hmm. red flag, forgot, missed, location, location, location. So pride of ownership, the way that it looked from the front. So it was a Jamaican, set up as a Jamaican spot. I think the last uh, place that moved out of there was doing soul food. And when I walked through the kitchen, it was almost like they were upset and poured all the grease out of the deep fryer on the ground. Mm. Okay, so uh. it needed new paint. It had a horrible um, patio that was so low, um, uh, low roof line that it was dark, even though it was an exterior patio. But it needed everything, and we painted. We had to clean up equipment, just like when you're watching the shows it's and restaurant lot. rescue, yeah. and you're going it's in and scrubbing lot. everything down. I've yeah. been there. So it had what it needed to start or what I could start with and I mm-hmm. had to start with what was there. Yeah. So cleaned all that up. Um it is truly so like your came business, with equipment. Your family came built the business from that's beautiful. The you know, the bottom in the bottom you guys of got the it up. Because now it's been how long has that same business been alive? Uh thirteen years. So that's a success story. 13 years. And so I speak of the prior <laughs> restaurants because there were five months, and I think the longest business made up, might have had three, two to three years of success. Yeah. So it, it constantly turned over. And, um, yeah, it's been open for a while. Yeah. Food so one of the things you easy. said that no. stands out is that 
you got the money mm-hmm. from the settlement or your family did mm-hmm. and that looking back you do wish that you guys would have stopped yeah had a business plan thought about your plan of action mm-hmm. and not just let that i think a lot of times in our generation and actually everyone's we get some money and we're like okay what we want to do with it right. as opposed to just like yeah. letting it sit for a second and really thinking about the next yeah. move to yeah. be able to double it triple it and all that stuff so that stands out to me because a lot of people ask uh, business questions on here because we're entrepreneurs or, mm-hmm. you know, how do you guys succeed or how do you what happens in moments of you when you fail? Mm-hmm. So I do think it is important that you talk about, you know, the moments that you guys were low, like what were ways mm-hmm. that you were able to keep the business alive for 13 years yeah. through all these changes. Mm-hmm. It's like, how were you able to do that? Yeah, um, just like people change and grow, so do businesses and companies. Um, Without a plan, you know, starting the way that it did, everything was backwards. And, you know, where someone might have an initial investment, whether it's tens of thousands, hundreds or millions, um, you can put that up front. Or most of people in our community, people of color, young women, young men, those who do not have the ability to take a bunch of um, investment or funds Mm -hmm. uh, to start end up paying for that as they grow. So let's just say my million dollar investment or upfront um, cost that I did not have um, was paid throughout the life cycle of this company Mm -hmm. through education, preparation, business services, um, uh, lawsuits, legal Um, and all sorts of things. Mm. So when talking about starting a business, um, usually you would put together a business plan. Mm -hmm. That passion, that fire, that desire we all have where it's Mm -hmm. so clear, that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. So when you're focusing on the easy part, you tend to forget all the foundational nuggets that you need, the the support that you need, the backup plan that you need, and having your your, um, personal finances in order and understanding how to separate these these decisions that you're making of how you're using your funds. Because when you're young and you have this money, you don't think about rainy day. You don't right. think, no, not, there's not enough family members or elders or even friends or neighbors to tell us about their pitfalls and their failures. Mm -hmm. So we hear about these success stories. We hear about the climb. We celebrate milestones. But when there's a failure or there's something that's broken down, we can't have those conversations because we can't let anyone see us struggle. Yeah, I think that itself is such a huge conversation because, mm -hmm. you know, we watched our parents, you know, build a business like I remember mm-hmm. my mom starting off with literally one machine and it was like this is the one machine but if I had to go it was a black and white machine if she had to do color she was at Kinko's mm. until she was able to build up and get that mm. next yes. machine and that cost and that even cost, that cost even more. more so it's it's you see I feel very blessed to have seen like parts of the struggle my yeah. parents made it look good to where yeah. I don't know half <laughs> half of it no and I didn't truly learn until I was in my Nine, between 19 and 24 when uh-huh. I was managing when one we're of their, questioning. Con- their yeah. contracts, which was in the food industry. Okay. And we did that without a necessary, like, a hardcore business plan. It was just mm-hmm. more so, like, we've had all this experience. We know yes. this, you know, coming from custom catering, event yeah. planning. Like, we know food well. Yes. We've had longevity in business here. I got thrown into the fire at that point. So it's... You got to make, you have to have that plan. Mm -hmm. And I, during that time, I was taking classes at a JC and I was meeting all these other people who were like, yo, you really know a lot about this business stuff. Like, what are you doing with it? Yeah. I started writing business plans for fun. Okay. So, Mm. um... In you that, did tell me that. Oh, I, I think we did. No, I think we I did still, some work. The together, crazy but... thing is, I still have business plans that I feel could be utilized mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, like, but I had to take that time and like, I had to step back and really learn and like the research, doing your SWOT analysis, analysis talking to other business owners. Like, you right. have to ask, not just, oh, you're so successful. How'd you get here? No. What were your failures like? Mm-hmm. Yes. How many times did you fail? Like, every entrepreneur I know has failed 10 times over. Mm-hmm. Like, I, when I meet someone, I don't want to know, like, oh, oh, 
I'm not enamored by the oh the shiny office or the big yeah. building. Yes. I'm like, how many buildings did you lose before right, you got, right. Right. You got yeah. this yeah. one? Like, yeah. so what did you, you guys learn? felt like you were taking losses, or when you felt like you were at your downfalls, mm -hmm. who would you turn to, or like who did you lean to? Is that the community? Is that each other? Is mm -hmm. that back on your parents? Mm -hmm. Like, so I was I was started with my parents um, for sure. And um, they were able to give, you know, good advice, good direction. But I always question because I didn't see their success. Right. So within they're telling their own me businesses? within their own. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think a lot of what they were sharing also were um, trying to avoid the failure and the pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Right. But then um, you need some sound advice and you need some advice from somebody who's doing well. So some of the first calls I made were to my family members, put out a whole, what is it, APB? <laughs> the crime scene stuff. Uh, what you mean, law and order? You put out the message to everybody. Yeah, like, okay. Anyway, that's the way. That's the signal. That's the way. And there exactly. are yeah. exactly. there are successful <laughs> people in our family that are not just on the entrepreneurial side, but on the corporate side. Yes. And I feel like Danielle, you did a really good job of like going to them where it was. Oh yeah. When you put those structure. signals out, where you received, did you feel like you got received? In, in a way, because when, I, when I'm reaching out to my corporate family members, you know, they're looking at me as a grassroots, you know, burger flipper. So, or, you know, I'm a cook or mm -hmm. I'm running a restaurant that is um, in a small location, small operation. So we're not on the same level. So to me, that's not being received well. I I don't There's think so. There. In, in some ways, you're received, but not the way you would yeah. Like. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like people yeah. don't want to take you as serious when you're like, no, I'm genuinely trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I am working hard. I'm doing the 12 to 16 hour days. Like, yeah, yeah. But with that being it's not said, received all the time, they did send me in the right direction because I found, you know, the small business center. Mm -hmm. I would talk to economic development. I would get um, involved with the radio, the Sentinel, you know, full mm -hmm. scope of things. So what I, what I needed first was who was in the, who was in food business. So that's what drew me to Auntie Connie. Um, that's Nana y'all. <laughs> and then uh, who else was in food? Um, she hooked me up with a couple of people because of mm -hmm. her network. Um, I would reach out to a few chefs because we had some family members who were cooks, and then I would ask for uh, time um, for training. They mm -hmm. would come into the kitchen, give me what they could. That's important. Yeah, TV. I mean, you, yeah. TV, YouTube, radio, self-educate. So I would follow Gordon Ramsay. I would follow Guy Fieri. I would look at these celebrity chefs and just mimic what they would do on restaurant rescue shows. Mm. So I, I, I particularly focused on those who needed overhauling um, business who um, had to be fully transparent and talk about whatever was going on. Yeah. Um, so I did. I would pay for consulting. I would look for chefs. If I saw them on the street in a coat, I stopped every single one of them. I would go to different locations and ask managers or the employees, can I get to your manager, owner? Can I speak to them? I would like some help. Mm. So, so you weren't shy. Uh, no, no. no. Well, and I, she's you, shy in certain yeah, areas, but, but when it comes you to have business, to take care of business. business. It sounds she's like, like you're aggressive. You cannot, like, that's why I'm sitting there so smiling. You don't I'm have like, this plan, is Danny. Like, it's so funny. You don't yeah. Yeah. You ask for help. You uh, start you, that, like that, that you, you kind of yeah. backtrack and you kind of have to put yourself out there. You don't have mm -hmm. the time or the luxury or the capacity to move backwards <laughs> and plan. When you start that business, the, it's, it builds momentum and you have to keep going. And sometimes that's not good. But, Where do you want the business to go present day? Um, the business, to me, the business belongs to the community because mm -hmm. they helped me build it. I, I did not come from... Um, culinary background. I was not trained. I had never worked in a restaurant to get that experience. I needed the people around me to get me to where I want, where I wanted to be. Plus, so many successful multi-millionaire, um, multiple business owners say that they really didn't get anywhere alone, mm -hmm. and that stuck with me. So I never wanted to climb alone. Mm -hmm. It never belonged to me. It was bigger than me. So you want. The business to thrive for I the want community a family and to be for the community for the community mm -hmm. family legacy if that's possible because mm -hmm. we you know that's a whole nother conversation even employee own because a lot of people overlook the people oh, who help you yeah. build it from the first person you who might have walked cry, through the door to help like, me 
It's so true. I've had so, so many real. people volunteer their time, their mm-hmm. effort to um, help launch and start this business that it belongs to them. Yeah. Because when you put so much into something where it's almost it came from nothing, it came from my mother being hurt. Mm. This settlement yeah. was an accident in which she suffered and I had to help her through. So this money isn't like something that I should take for granted mm-hmm. that was invested to start this business and she's gone. Yeah. It's like the foundation. And my father of it. is here watching all of this. And at every moment we need to help or support. He was there. Mm-hmm. So I owe him. Mm-hmm. And you owe it to yourself. So I owe it to myself. And then this whole story. You've done the work. It's, 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 you've, you've oh, literally hit, hit the I'm not going to go. go. I'm not going to try and cry too uh. bad because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But you're emotional and emotions is good. And I feel like and we're not taught necessarily to be emotional or to show it and that's okay like I think it shows how much passion you have behind it and how much love you have for it I don't think it comes off (laughs) as like emotion of being sad I think it comes off of like this was this is your baby I'm just tired I'm tired of number one women who put their life on the line for something okay we're talking family marriage business but we're talking about community and all the people that are affected by something that is created Mm -hmm. but we're in a we're in a time right now where i'm watching our generation and i'm watching the struggle at post pandemic i'm watching people people that are around me every day either thrive or struggle and we're all dealing with some similar issues in life whether we lost whether we're in a relationship whether we're in love out of love whether we have children, whether we're bringing up and inspiring each other, you know, we have the opportunity to to create this story and this history mm-hmm. and try to keep it alive without drama. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you in your phase of mm-hmm. recreating you? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Away from being Outside a business, business. owner. Yes. I was forced to recreate creating me and I think it was it was okay that it happened in this timing because all I knew for me was was food. Mm-hmm. All I knew was this brand. All I knew how to do was serve. I you you there's no time for it when you gotta prep and yeah. cook, run a restaurant, run a store. It has its own hours. Yeah. You know, forget what you got going on. Do you feel like in Indiana, were you able to pour into you? Oh, for the first time. For the first time. Yeah. And now you're back. Does that mean you're back to kind of reclaim, restart, reown what you and your parents have built? Definitely. Definitely. I needed that space. Um just to, to create some distance from other family members and friends that were grieving from loss, mm-hmm. um, recovering from the pandemic and COVID loss. And I was literally the individual in my family um, with the finances, the time and the energy to also try to support what was happening outside of um, entrepreneurship or business functions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the last, the last three, four years, there's been back to back losses at the same time that I'm dealing with a a marital issue. And then, um, you know, the business issues with that, and then trying to give myself the permission to survive. Mm -hmm. I was hospitalized, um, prior to the decision to take a break and find a place where I can heal. I could not walk for two weeks. I was crawling around my house, hands and knees. My feet and my hands were blistered. And I still had a restaurant to run at the same time. So there were times where I actually had to put shoes on, get up and walk with this issue that I was facing. Mm. When I got to the hospital, they're testing my heart. They're, you know, they're telling me I'm having palpitations or what looks like to be um, the signs of a heart attack. Mm. And then my skin is reacting because of anxiety and mm. stress. I thought maybe COVID, maybe it's, you know, a reaction from yeah, the vaccine. Yeah. yeah. 
but I didn't know what it was. It was undiagnosed, and I still needed to get up and work and take care of business. So from that point, you know, I thought COVID when you're sick, that feels like death. And, you know, excuse me for mentioning it and, you know, all the people who have been affected by that. This is a sensitive topic, um, even for the restaurant industry, um, because so many people are alone. So many people have lost. So much is different. Um, and that's a whole nother topic. Um but, but in a sense, it's like Indiana helped save you. Yeah, let's get to let's Literally. get to Indy. Let's get to like Indiana. It, helped, it seems like it helped to save you. The fact that I had a grandparent and an aunt there who needed help that I can go and spend some time was great. What happened um, with my decision to get there, um, I would have never imagined in my entire life. Mm. is one, just seeing how close I was to handle emergencies and fires here. We're the type of people that when someone calls or needs help, we're we're on the run because we don't have children. We're um, almost open or available outside of our relationship. And then we were doing okay financially. So it's like throughout this time period, you know, somebody calls, we're going. It literally took me to get to Indiana to be able to oversee what was happening in the company, in the business, the time away to just take time and look at the details, look at the financial statements, look at how things are operating, looking at our strategic plans, what is happening year over year, where is the profit, um, how are we going to move forward, and are we aligned with our message and what we you know, plan to do. Indiana um, was a way for me to almost look at what was happening here in Los Angeles from a bird's eye view. Mm. And I was so deep into my relationship and my marriage because number one thing for me was family or is family. Yeah. So I put family before my business. Ultimately, my marriage um, also was important over business operation because I also wanted to be a woman. I also, yeah. you know, wanted to take that position and allow my man to lead, allow the person I'm with to yeah. take care of what they say that they're, they're going to take care of, right? And when that's not happening, it's like, all right, for me, um, if I can't get what I need to do basic functions in my job, I need to step away. And my step away really wasn't a way as if I left L.A. to run or to exit or to um, not take care of my responsibility. I was pushed out. I was mm-hmm. blocked. Mm. I was ignored. I was challenged from someone that I've been with for so long. It's like you were almost, you you haven't been, but it's like you were written out of your own story. Mm-hmm. Written out of my own story. Like so it's, let me rewrite cared for. my own story. So, yeah. so going there, um, my goal was <sighs> I've got to learn what I did not know, but also need space from people calling me and leeching and taking you so, were almost too accessible. When almost you were too here. accessible. So being somewhere where I only know two people, it was Not like, oh my god, no. yeah. And then learning who I am and about myself from other people's perspectives. So my aunt, my grandma, they're telling me what they know about me, what they've watched, what they've observed, mm-hmm. why I might be in this situation, what I need to do I in spite that. of yeah. my situation. You have, to, you have to hear that from outside people. Mm-hmm. Like for me, as I've been pulling out out of my circle or out of my family space. When I hear or allow other people to observe or get to know me, and then they tell me about myself, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Now it's like you're able to take those words, those lessons, those mm-hmm. views, and apply them to yourself in different yeah. situations. And it allows you to better protect yourself or to put up boundaries um, or even realize how sometimes we are part of our own problem. problem. Yeah. Like, yes. And it's, I Most think it's hard because we do come from a family of doers. We come from very strong women who are like, they've literally had to thug it out through the mud. Like just literally just we do, done. we just mm-hmm. get it done. Yeah. And we also come from service providers. And in that we've like, I have an issue with this where I'm always, it's, it's give, 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 give. And I, didn't we even don't know how to receive because yeah. it was always, well, what can I do for you? Or what can I do for you? What can I give you? Or what do you need? Yeah, we're oh, proactive. We're, but we're anticipating. But you guys have people that do that for you because you can only give so much before you have nothing to give. 
you have to be poured back into? I had to get in a crazy relationship, have children, mm. go through all these things, lose a part of myself to even be able to say, oh, wait, yeah. who's pouring back into me? Mm -hmm. I, If I'm pouring into all these other spaces, I'm depleted at the end of the day. Yeah. I can't rub my own feet. I can't. I, I can, but it's mm -hmm. like Not I'm only too that tired. You can't give mm -hmm. to somebody I, else I can't. Anymore. So You're it's drained. it's. I had to learn how to take a step back. So when Danielle mm -hmm. removed herself, got pushed out, you know, pushed out, and then said, "Let me take this leap." The family was so worried, and but I was like, mm -hmm. "Y'all, she needs this. Like she mm -hmm. deserves this." Like at first, it was like Indiana, but I was thinking like. It's gonna be some cows. It's gonna be some like you <laughs> for know, sure. Because it, it's, it's questionable. It's, like why? Why go that. that route? You have to to get your sanity back sometimes because it's. We talked about it, but I mean, when you're uh, really friends with somebody, you do what's. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I cried when she left. Yeah. Like first of all, oh. this is the first time that you're not really you're thinking about separating. Not to be funny but I'm single, so. But it's like, we can finally go out. Like, yeah. have fun. Yeah. And I'm like... Oh, now you're leaving. This? Yes. Like, literally, and I had just got back, too. So, and I had been gone for two years. Mm. And I'm like, dang, now we can, but this is what she needed. Yeah. It's not about anybody yeah. else's opinion. Mm. It's well, about her. Well, the other hers. thing, entrepreneurship, now, before I forget this point, you know, uh, what's the saying, the, the top five people you surround yourself with, you're most likely to become? Mm. So, you know, my circle was grieving. You know, my, my support system are doing things outside of um, um, what we morally would mm. do and accomplish, but also... Um, the person that I've trusted to protect me, to provide for me, to be there for me is absent. Mm -hmm. They are not um, financially stable. They're not communicating. I'm an owner of a company learning that I have been removed from certain access and things that I should have access to without even requesting. Mm -hmm. why, is, why are these things happening? So when you have a partner that you're battling against, um, and then there are some things that you want to protect yourself, um, pr that I wanted to protect myself on, um, I felt like I wanted to disassociate. Mm -hmm. Really, at the same time, there's so much riding on the line for what was happening that I did not find mm -hmm. the help that I needed going to all these agencies, organizations, all this help, all these people... Um, who could fix or manage or give um, uh, advice. Sound advice. I'm taking it, but my partner mm -hmm. isn't. Mm -hmm. So not only am I battling the world, I'm battling the one person that I've spent my entire adult life with. How do I fix that? How do I, how do I go against his word? And we're talking documentation as well. Going to Indiana allowed me to some space for one to diffuse a situation to allow um, a company to thrive without drama, mm -hmm. without tearing down the morale of a team that's been established, but also um, not to make sure there's there's public um, interest or or public scrutiny mm. for what's happening in a brand that I wanted to preserve and a business that I want to preserve. There is so much happening that Indiana allowed me to see um, that I needed to stay yeah. away at one point because there is heavy, um, there are heavy circumstances and things that could happen if you're not acting or doing things right. I don't want to be a part of that. That is not me. Mm -hmm. So I, think I couldn't tell my family all these things. You know, we have family that are nosy, so... <laughs> Everybody does. If I really were talking about what's happening in my relationship when the outside has looked so good for so long, yeah. to talk about personal things, with mm -hmm. sometimes that can get messy and sticky. Mm -hmm. I was always the type of person to keep whatever business um, was happening within my family or my, my marriage. To yourself. To myself. Yeah. In Indiana, I could be me. I could talk. You could vent. I can vent. I can find the help. I didn't have to worry who I was saying what to. Mm. Uh. Well, I'm happy that 
you did that. Like, I'm happy you had Indiana for yourself, Mm -hmm. for just you. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy you're home. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see you kind of, like, blossom Mm -hmm. and recreate and establish, like, your new foundation for you as an individual, but also you as a business owner. Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no matter what it looks like right now, Mm -hmm. you are still a business owner. You still created this business. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There's no question about it. There's no question about it. Legacy (laughs) is is there. I'm just excited for you. I want you to come back Yeah. when, because you've only been here for like 2.5 seconds. Mm -hmm. Like I want you to come (laughs) back when you're like, I'm Danielle, this is my business, Mm -hmm. meet me at this address, Mm -hmm. come see me here like yeah. come see me oh we're here. gonna have a thing called so, crew event there i think <laughs> you know i think <laughs> you, you've That's only kind of hit like the the little you give us like a little bit yeah but yeah. you gotta come back when you can when you're comfortable when you're ready mm-hmm. when you feel empowered yeah when you're you know ready to amplify yeah, this new like, voice I think that that you, sure. you have to come back when yeah. you're like this is my brand i'm yeah. recreating but this is the brand that i want you guys to follow this yeah. is what yeah. i want you guys to support because like you said community is everything yes. mm-hmm. and i think our biggest thing is building community and uplifting it and yes. pouring back into it oh, so yeah. you have to come back when you're like ready to say like this is exactly where I want you guys to come and meet me and support me at. <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure. And the beautiful thing is there's so many people who are waiting, who are literally waiting for uh-huh. you to be like, okay, y'all. Yeah. This shit is show's it. over. I've been trying to tell yeah, her that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. God has been literally it's, going, uh, <laughs> dropping people yeah. into like our path mm-hmm. while we're out just in general. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's funny. Yeah. But I I've love, always told her that. I love God. I think it's going to be great. a great... Absolutely. A great rewriting of your story. It is. Because for how many people I've helped, um, you know, being out of mm-hmm. state or being in a different environment, no one knows you to be to be confirmed and affirmed that what I know and what I've done mm-hmm. also helps others. Mm-hmm. Like that really validates the fact that, you know, this this system or this um, concept that's been created, you know, it never stopped. It, it's never um uh, ceased to exist. It it didn't leave or change without me being there. It's still yeah. timeless. Yeah, I appreciate it's, you yeah. coming on yeah. and yeah. even mm. opening up yourself in this way yeah. and on this platform. And I'm excited. Yeah, um, I'm like it makes me excited to see uh-huh. you kind of stepping out of your comfort zone. Right and. It's like the beginning of your journey, you know? Yeah, yeah. A new one. It's been a time with each other. A new one. Like, it's a, yeah. it, it's a this is book. a new one for you. <laughs> it's not even a new chapter. Yeah, it's, it's a new one. It's a whole new We've gone down book. a new road. So. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I'm excited. Um, yeah. No, thank our, you all, too. Like, what you guys are doing and what you're sharing, you know, is really important. And I've been listening. You know, I've been growing with you guys and what you're sharing here. So I think it's just all about growth. Mm -hmm. We've all made Mm -hmm. choices that are questionable Mm -hmm. or look back and we're like, why the fuck did I do that? Or we made some that I'm like, hell yeah, I did that shit. Like it's life. It's just life. But I think one Mm -hmm. of the things you said that I'm like, yeah, that makes so much sense is you grow. Like you have to grow within whatever it is. And that's what we're constantly doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm just appreciative of any time anyone can come on and be like transparent and real and show emotion and talk. And it's not always going to be pretty. No, No, the truth isn't pretty though. No, pretty is is simple to share. Pretty Pretty is simple to share. We show that all the time. What did Beyonce say? Pretty hearts. Yeah, but we live in a world where everybody wants to be this. Wow. Highlight real. Person in a box. Yeah, Yeah. it's not. It's It's, not realistic at all. It's not it. Not life. It's yeah. not it, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see where you go. Me too. So where can people, if they can yet, yes, follow you or find you yeah. to follow your journey? Sure. Where can they follow you at? Sure. Well, um, so you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, just put in my name. Business, babe. For I sure. love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, I'm like, you going to no. get on your Facebook? Well, no. I mean, okay. my, my social existed through, you know. Your business. The business so we're not in which I'm having to be continued okay. there. So yeah. we'll be continued That's on there. To be there. continued. Okay. Um, for sure. But yeah, definitely connect with me there. Find me on Facebook. Um, if you want my cell phone number. Girl, yeah. we go to yeah. your Instagram page. <laughs> Did she just say <laughs> no? no. Oh, we need to bail on your Instagram page. Yo, like, let me know. Right now. <laughs> no, We're going to bail you it. Yeah, you can email me. I'm on Instagram. Me. Thank you. 
No, don't don't find me on. Do you guys put the email? She said she said don't what? do that. Don't do. <laughs> yeah. I, we can't say. Well, just say to be continued. Yeah, to be to because my name. Let's just. Yeah, we can put it in the comments. You said you said we can't do that. That is the best IG name ever. My last name is Jackson. My first name is Allie. They used to call me Axon Jackson. When I lived in the South, one of my homegirls used to call me Big Juice. So That is the best fucking name. Juicy J, Juicy Jackson, Allison A. I know. Mine is so I would have a t-shirt that says Juicy J A. Like, that is hard. Okay. Go follow her at Juicy J A. You guys can follow us on Think Loud Crew on Instagram and on YouTube. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. <laughs> Go hit up Danielle on LinkedIn. For sure. Go hit her up on LinkedIn and say, girl, I, mean, I see IG. you. <laughs> your, your IG, you can find Love Danielle, L U V. Danielle. See, she's so sweet. Thank it's you. sweet. Love. There's Danielle. three underscores. L U V, three underscores, Danielle. Danielle is going to come back on when <laughs> she is Juicy able J to underscore. share <laughs> the brand <laughs> and the restaurant. <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> Because I'm like, Lord. That is so funny. Oh. Yeah. Total opposites. Mm-hmm. Love to And then help any other entrepreneurs and women. Yes. 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 Are you open to like mentoring or giving advice? Because like, absolutely, there are people like Cheyenne said who yes. come and ask their questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I have this really wonderful woman who the other day was like, "I am the cook, the manager. I'm doing the doing deliveries. The I'm doing this. Yo. I'm making yeah. the sauce." And yeah. I was like, "I." Want to connect you with Danielle? Yeah, so I mean, bad. I've done every dirty job. I've done every clean. Job. I, I was in, I've been the dishwasher. I've done what you do in Indiana. Like that's what you do. At yeah. SBA. And that's what yeah. she does in Indiana. She yeah. helps other small businesses. I mean, I, oh, I, I yes. turned this. I turned <laughs> this. Like, that's what she does. This is Danielle. Yes. <laughs> I, it's just it's aligned with what we've done from the beginning anything we knew that can help somebody else yes. out, you got it there's no gatekeeping here or it should mm-hmm. not be you mm-hmm. you need to there's enough room for everybody to yes. thrive yes. but yeah I got there and they actually invited me to apply because they knew my story they found out what I do they really needed help in truth. this industry and in this the first business, black person so, <laughs> the first black person woman in my um, company yep. and then working for economic development the chamber of commerce and the small business development Element Center. So go I also help with every project. We need to ask my girl. That's what I'm like. What? Y'all just hey. have her on the panel. Yeah, we're hey. like, it's hey. just this thing now. Okay, this, 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 this. you're talking about cross country yeah. over here trying to like, make things literally. happen. And when right. I say trying to figure it out, I've seen Dan in the last few years where it was like the meetings that were had, <sighs> the conversations that were had, the guidance that's been called on. I've been sitting in the room like. <laughs> okay, God is doing so much to make oh, yeah. so much happen right. mm-hmm. and to move so much around. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm very I can proud only of you. smile. I'm yeah. very like, I only tell people Thank she's God. like uh, my strongest friend. Like uh, literally like no, seriously. Yeah. I don't the, think there's nothing you can't do. I'm you proud do of you. Yeah. I'm excited to see where you go from Me here. Too. I'm excited to have you back on the podcast mm. when we can tell people to pull up at your restaurant. So <laughs> let us know. Wait. Literally pull okay. up. And we'll have custom shirts. <laughs> Mine's going to say Juicy J.A. on it. Uh, no, <laughs> my name is <laughs>